Association of Spit Dat in Residence at Woolly Mammoth. Now, my name is Kristen Jackson, and I am the Connectivity Director at Woolly Mammoth, where we have been looking forward to tonight's show, The Spook Who Spat by the Dat. Now, tonight, our hosts, Dwayne B. and Droopy, have drawn inspiration from the revolutionary novel, The Spook Who Sat by the Door, and curated two amazing poets, Kim B. Miller and 13th of Nazareth, who use words to wage guerrilla warfare against those who would attempt to silence the revolution. We also have room on the open mic, so anyone who wants to join in, this is your chance. Now, throughout the pre-show, you saw some community agreements that exist in order to maintain the beautiful and positive environment and energy that is spit at uh, and help us practice care for one another. We ask that you be respectful and generous with one another, acknowledge the impact of your words and actions, stay engaged through use of the chat and reactions functions, respect the artists, and agree as a community to struggle against all forms of systemic oppression. Unless you are performing, you will be on mute, so please do not forget to use that chat or the applause functions to show our poets some love. And if you're in the Zoom room, uh, I want to encourage you to show your face if you feel comfortable doing so. Uh, it always helps our artists to have, you know, people to see um, in this virtual world that we inhabit. Uh, what else should I share? Oh, speaking of the virtual world, this event is also being recorded and live streamed on Facebook, but don't worry. Uh, folks who are showing your faces here, showing your faces here does not cause you to be seen in the live stream. Another way to show some love is by tagging Wooly Mammoth and Spit Dat on social media using at Wooly Mammoth TC, at Spit Dat DC, and the hashtag Spit Happens. Uh, on behalf of Wooly Mammoth, we are thrilled to have you here with us this evening and without further ado, I'm going to turn the virtual mic over to our co-hosts, Dwayne B. and Droopy. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Human beings in a mob. What's a mob to a king? What's a king to a god? What's a god to a non-believer? Who don't believe in anything? We make it out alive. All right, all right. No church in the wild. Blood on the Coliseum floor. Lions and tigers and bears hear me roar. Yeah, heroin was reparations. Even in heaven is segregation. Left wing, right wing, and you thought angels was just harp playing and singing? I'm saying, even angels got shit with him. Ask Satan, he was right there in the midst with him. I ain't been in the group since the fifth business. That's my man, native son, and dry fish business. And my main sir Rains moved to Michigan. K-O-M, keep on moving, I'm with the shit. Spit that ain't a group, it's a movement. Mock dude since 2002, dig? Yeah, it was written in the verse. No church in the wild, but it's wild in the church. Church. Human beings in a mob. What's a mob to a king? What's a king to a god? What's a god to a non-believer who don't believe in anything? We make it out alive. All right, all right. No church in the wild. Ah, ah. What do you do when your mind and your body don't agree? Damn sure don't drown it out with the Hennessy. Mix the perp for the buzz and the burp. Folks will be pouring goose in your memory. These are the days of our lives. We start to survive, but the day-to-day -day strains eyes. When innocence is killed and provoked, the faithful lose hope. Hopeless folk go comatose. Arguments and Adderall, cocaine, Percocet, and some propofol. We overdose on Holy Ghost just to sleep it off. Pray to God. Oh my God. Uh, we overdose on Holy Ghost to sleep it off. Pray to God. This is the way the glory falls. Fishing for religion now. Keep your rods hung till your words are read like God, son of nigga, bitch, cunt, slut, whore, be what we speak. Our relationships are doomed to misogyny. Surely we're bound to see. 
Sonny Bono, the way we hitting them trees, but in death, we believe that we feel relief. If I gotta die young, pray the process is brief. Please, human beings in a mob. What's a mob to a king? What's a king to a god? What's a god to a non-believer who don't believe in anything? Not a goddamn thing. Not a goddamn thing. What's going what on, you? Spit That? Welcome home. Welcome to the Spit That Residency. I am your host, co-host, Drew Anderson. And I am your co-host, Dwayne B., the Crochet Kingpin. Uh, thank y'all for being here. Again, you could be anywhere in the... You probably are anywhere in the world right now, probably inside your home uh, residence, your domicile, your uh, dorm room, your hotel room, your isolated space, keeping safe. But you chose to be here with us right now. And so we greatly appreciate it. Um, to our folks and family over in Facebook, what's popping with y'all? I'm in both. I'm in the chat right now with the Facebook and I'm in the chat in the Zoom room. So let's converse, you dig? Let's talk in both of those rooms. What's popping, Drew Tang? Man, I'm good. Just, you know, living my life. Uber driver tried to drive off with my laundry the other day. So I had to give him one star, man. Mm. It, it didn't feel good in my spirit, but it's what was necessary. It's called tough love. The dude, I'm, I'm running, man. <laughs> you picked me up from a laundromat. <laughs> the time to put my clothes in your trunk. You don't remember that I got? This dude drove off. I said, I know I got nice drawers and everything, but damn. I'm running down the street and flip flops talking about, hey, yo, this dude got my clothes. This <laughs> go through the app and they said that they was going to charge me $15 for the dude to come return my shit and get on out of here. But I fixed that though, so we good. I got my drawers, I got my pride, and I got my spit that. It's Bang. The spook who spat by the dat night. Shout out to Sam Greenlee, revolutionary novel, revolutionary film. And we got some revolutionary features for y'all tonight. None other than Kim B. Miller and 13 of Nazareth. So y'all are in for a poetry haiku clinic this evening because Cats is about to get down. Plus, we got a live ass open mic. Plus, it's not even too late to get on the open mic. Yes, indeed. Speaking of, that just dropped in the Zoom room. And uh, my folks over on Facebook, y'all can feel free to, you know, hop in the chat. Use some emojis, tap all them little faces down at the bottom of the screen, and let us know how you're feeling about the show. That being said, I think we may be ready for an open mic. Drew Tang, are you ready for an open mic? I'm been ready for open mic. Bang, bang. Then first up on the open mic list, uh, this is fam from from. I'm trying to remember what was the first venue. Might have been Java Head. We this mm -hmm. might have been. I'm pretty sure. No, you ain't used to go to job head. It must have been Mocha then. First time was at the ECAC. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Really? The years are getting away from us. Wow, See, yeah. Movie. It mm. was right after Mocha Hut. Y'all moved from Mocha Hut, though. Ah, uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Well, y'all, Please bang your hands together wherever you are in the world. Show some love with the emojis. Show some love with the reactions in the chat. Uh, show some love right now for inner peace. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm doing great. I know what's going on in the world, but, and Mike and Drew will understand this. In April of this year, I became stably housed and co-owner of a business. And it's been years I've been fighting employment and stable housing. So I'm, I'm great, great. And which takes me to my piece. I'm doing a lot of purging, a lot of getting rid of stuff. And some of it is going into poetry books. So the next book I plan on putting out, no date yet, is called Love Letters and Hate Mail. Love Letters to Black Women, Hate Mail to the Systems That Oppress Us. The first finished piece is hate mail to rape culture and misogyny. And it is titled, Get Your Dick Out of Your Hands. Get your dick out your hand, because it's the only thing you can feel. The entirety of your manhood is small enough to fit in your palm. You love stroking it. Your chest, your dick, and the narcissism of your male psyche are all pulsating and growing simultaneously until that feeling becomes the only feel that's real. 
I can see through my rose colored lenses that your pussy covered lenses are smudged and dirty. They keeping you from seeing me wholly, from clearly seeing dick alone. Don't do the trick. Get your dick out your hand. Cause that feel is so intense that it makes sense why you tell me I assume too much when I tell you, you presume too much. It's misleading you into continually justify violating me while you feel I know I want it. Why you feel I'm always asking for it. Always want me riding it because you're too small to get on top of it. How can I get on your dick with your hand always covering it? Always beating me or yourself off because you're so full of insecurities that you need to release. Left hand reeks of your attempts to hide your inadequacies. You can't even account for the hard on in your hand, but believe that you can single-handedly handle me. Get your dick out your hand. Is that why you can't hear yourself? Is that why the deafening crunch of the eggshells I walk on daily aren't heard as my sorrows, frustrations, and fears? Is that why my nose and stops fall on deafening ears? Get your dick out your hands. It's numbing your other senses. You can't see my wound past my pussy to, <clears throat> to even identify me. My nipples are built for nourishment, but if they ain't sexualized, then I'm ostracized because feeding your seed from my bus doesn't feed your lust. So they looked at in disgust. The lusciousness of my lips are only good enough to get the shaft. Meanwhile, paying no attention to the voice behind the gag. Shh, don't speak. Don't tell. Be nice. Keep it quiet. Get your dick out your hand. It has turned you blind. You don't see your own contradictions. The standards I teach my daughters to make you teach your sons to break. The cycle of abuse is to continue. You can't even feel when I ain't feeling you. Instead, you feed me intoxications, intimidations, and illusions. Instead of showing your sobering truths, searchlighting for victims just to gaslight our trauma and abuse but can't see waiting on wanting me to call you daddy is your issue. Get your dick out your hand. But maybe that's all you got. It's e easier to throw out labels like whole bait thought, right hand reeking of insufficiencies that don't begin to begin with me. Afraid of letting it go and being left vulnerable. Offering me dick to fix it while simultaneously telling me to get over it with your most treasured member in your grip. Get your, put your dick down and man up. I officially give up. I give up believing my value and worth that's defined by your definition. Sick of your tricks. I want a man who's bigger than the throb of it. I therefore formally unaccept your un accountability because it's clear to me that you feeling your dick in your hands ain't got a damn thing to do with me. Love letters and hate mail, right? Man, yes. Let's know when that come out. That was fire right there. Thank you. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love oh. it. Get out your hand, Get Jack. <clears throat> Pun intended. Get out your hand, Jack. <laughs> One more time in the Facebook Live and in the chat in the Zoom. Show some love to inner peace. I've been showing love. Definitely, we happy to see you again. We happy to have you back. You never left the family. Good to see your face and hear your good voice. Yeah, good, good to be here. Voice. And congratulations on the wins. And I'm looking yes. for this book coming out. Thank it's, you. It's 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 good to hear good news. You know, like you know, yeah. Period. Period. It's good to hear good news. Yeah. Yeah. That part. Uh True. To this open mic? Yeah, I think we're ready to get back to this open mic. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, I just was looking at the list. On d d a d a deck, on deck is Lunaverse, Luna the Poet. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's Kimberly J. So spit that, show that love in the chat with your emojis in Facebook land, in Zoom land for our second open micer. Uh, the spook who spat by the that Kimberly J. Hello, everyone. 
All right. So uh, it has been a minute since I've been on an East Coast open mic. So I guess I will just do poems. All right, give me one second. Okay. The beginning of a long poem on why I burned the hospital down after Lawrence Benford. The doctors celebrated through my worsening illness, babbling in blood tests, CT scans, pulsing through my veins, this sun shone darkness where light should have landed carved contempt instead of diagnosis, mental illness instead of stroke, I, out of the corners of my consciousness, only spot free of clutter and wayward shock shined on broken pieces of blood clot stripped down through my arteries and veins, searching for a spot to stop the blood, to stop my consciousness. This hospital, stocked full of deafening, deadly arrogance, black bodies too young and subhuman to be broken, medical care, ration for those white enough to wipe the slate clean, these hands built societies now pray for societies not to pray on them but to pray for them these brain cells burst of brilliance sparks of electrical shocks burst into flames so now i spit fire my face melts into frozen drooped half smiles this black woman not allowed to feel pain as others do for my right side to wither as this building burns as holes meant to dispense cure are plugged with silence contempt and gasoline i burn as much as this hospital does my body Burnt bitter to their satisfaction, soulless, forced to grow up as fast as this flame consumes the illness I was told was in my head, trusting in modern medical marvels not available to the body's torture to develop them. I watch this motherfucker burn this heat evaporates tears never allowed to fall this wind carries this flame throughout the banded houses other structures we were never meant to be while beating the broken and the bloody they allow insurrection spread rebellion throughout the wretched before gentrification kills us all they decide to let nature take its course and this hospital outstretches its arms to keep us out in a second i am to be lynched watch the flames burn this space that wouldn't have allowed me in any way flicker then watch my skin pool into helplessness my bones powder into dust but still be the beast that i'm accused of being i still swing from this noose and tree and i still watch this motherfucker burn, smile as their melted bodies pooled with our ashes and bad medical provi advice provide. In peace. Well, damn. That joint sound like the fire this time. Kimberly J, uh, I mean, yeah, you did it to it. That piece is fire. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. It's been a minute. Yeah, yes, yeah. indeed. Where Welcome you, you, back. Where you, where you calling in from, zooming in from? I am in Texas now. Okay. The stars at night are big and bright. <laughs> Deep in the heart of Texas. It's like not, I mean, but Dr. for Dr. real. Pepper. So, something like that, yes. <laughs> something like that. It's, it's an interesting place. To it, it's an interesting place that mm -hmm. South always has been, but Texas is an interesting place. Mm. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I can dig it. Well, in any case, it's just got hotter down there. And um, there's one more reason not to f with Texas. Named Kimberly J. Oh, for bringing that fire flame this way, bringing that southern heat across the zone streets. And the FB Live avenues. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all having this. Like I, I've missed this kind of stuff, and and just being able to pop on the Zoom and and participate is wonderful. Well, while we're talking about it, Thursday nights, every Thursday, we're on IG Live, Spit Dat DC, doing from nine Eastern to eleven Eastern, doing okay. an open mic. I'm hosting that, and so if you want to jump on IG and do a thing. We're happy to have you there as well. All right. I need to. I, this is it. Our partnership with Willie Mammoth. It's been mm -hmm. Tennessee, so it's good to have you, Kimberly J. Thank you. Boom. 
I would say give love to Kimberly J, but y'all already been doing that. You can, of course, feel free to give some more. But FB Live, Zoom, all of our Spit That Residency family, thank you for keeping it hot and live as we rock this fine evening. I think it's about time to get into our first speech, uh huh? Yeah, that, that sound about right to me. Um, so our first feature happens to be somebody who is incredibly gifted as a writer, amazingly gifted at moving a crowd. And I've seen this not just in DC, not just in the DMV area, you know, like Maryland and Virginia, and, and then like extending to like Richmond and Baltimore and like all that, but I, I rode up to Rochester and we did a gig in Rochester and I absolutely just witnessed a whole crowd of dudes that's just like, we getting drunk, we wilding out, we gonna turn up type of, type of vibe. And Kim B brought them down. Absolutely amazing. And with poems and haiku and really poignant thoughts that like, really strike a chord with people regardless of who they are um so yeah uh i i'm i'm excited drew are you excited what you think I, <laughs> ago, when we did the labor day show when we did the, your favorite poets favorite poet show we had gail danley and twain dooley and i think kim b was on that open mic mm -hmm. but i saw a light up a slam with bus boys and poets did on the ig live like a month ago she just, wherever poetry is, that's where she at. Whether it's a slam, whether it's an opportunity to teach poetry in like correctional facilities or with, with um, just folk who are interested in learning more about being a better writer and performer and family counseling, relationship counseling. If you listen close enough to a poetry, you're gonna find some relationship counseling in there too. So you about to heard, put in your money's worth right now. I heard she was spitting at the Million Man March. Me, Million me. Man March. <laughs> I need y'all to show some love right now. Um, there will be uh, something that goes around in both of the chat for Facebook as well as the chat uh, in the Zoom room. Um, you'll sign uh, this uh, digital card. Um, and that way you put some good love and good vibe in there as well. Um, and I believe that the Cash App, PayPal sort of information for Kim B. Miller will also hit in the chats too. Feel free to toss some money uh, her way, all that good stuff. Let's celebrate this artistry, celebrate Kim B. Miller. Bang your hands right now, wherever you are, for Kim B. Miller. Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you for that fantastic welcome. Appreciating everybody in the room. Thank you to the fantastic hosts. We've been running together for a long time now and having some fun in every particular venue. Ooh, the stories we could tell. But anyway, <laughs> onward to poetry. <laughs> ah, okay, here we go. This one doesn't have a title. <clears throat> we be Xena, but not the warrior princess. We be Wonder, but not the woman. <laughs> we say we not a superwoman, yet we slip that cape on trying to fly, trying to save a man. We see him slithering around and we think we can cure him. You ignore his tail, call my man and wonder why he won't act right. How you gonna be healthy in an unhealthy relationship trying to make Mr. Wrong, Mr. Right? They say a closed mouth never get fed, but one that only opens for a penis never gets full either. Vitamin D may keep your thighs happy, but the muscles that, your, your heart muscles are gonna require some more work. How many licks does it take to expose your addiction? as you wait to be spoon-fed yet another lie. The first one went down so smoothly. Why not feed yourself another one? You tell yourself you don't have a type. You don't look for a certain stature in a man. You don't care if he's beneath you as long as he's beneath you. It sucks that sucking is the only thing you wanna suck on. You hope a man can scratch that itch. Sex may hit your G spot, but the spot that contains your pain, it's gonna require more work. You're trying to save him, but you're the one drowning. You're the one singing Superwoman, so don't blame him for waiting for the chorus. 
your slave, your savior mentality has failed you. You can't fix a man. A man can only fix himself when he realizes he's broken. A broken person can't make you whole. Yet you expect loyalty. <laughs> but you can tell him all this. Oh, don't look at the grass on the other side. Tell him that, you know, he may find the grass green on the other side. Nah, tell him by the time he finds out the grass is not green on the other side, this lawn will have a new caretaker. Remember, you picked him. That wasn't his heart beating between your leg, but that's your dignity running down your thigh. You think a fat ass and thick thighs are all a man wants? You can listen to many songs by boys and not enough lyrics by men. Ask yourself one simple question. Are you his trick or his treat? So, I'm gonna get into some haikus and we're gonna do some more poetry. Haiku, what's a haiku? Haiku is a really short poem, three lines, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. 17 syllables, not words to make a point. Japan where it started, only in nature flowers. You know, we have to screw that up because that's what we do. So for us, it could be on any subject, it's really senryu, but we call it a non-traditional haiku and then we just default it to haiku. Here we go, haiku. Strong women are not unbreakable. We just know you ain't the hammer. Haiku. You cheat, but you say you love her. Well, tell your heart to talk to your dick. Haiku. Milkshakes may bring boys to the yard, but real men are going to want food. Haiku. Stop answering the booty call and blaming the caller. You picked up. It's three o'clock, what you want? You know what he want, you know what she want. Come on, stop playing. <laughs> Haiku. Your side dish won't pay your bills. Well, keep changing your pocket not your bed. Haiku. You say she's your side chick, but don't you have to call before you come by? Haiku. Him. You ain't nothing. Me. I was nothing. That's why I picked you. Bye, boy. Haiku. Get counseling. Your mate is not your therapist. They are your victim. Haiku. <laughs> that one always makes me laugh when I see people's reaction. Haiku. The only reason you still have him is because she don't want him back. Haiku. <laughs> As soon as you lose your job, she leaves. Now you lost two jobs. Huh. <laughs> I could. Stop blaming men for having baggage when you have a storage unit. Let's see, let's see. I think I'll go to my next poem. Nah, let me do one more haiku. Haiku. If you stroke your pen like you stroke men, your writing would have more meaning. Okay, okay moving on. 
<laughs> oh, y'all are making me laugh. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, here we go. This one doesn't have title too. I'm not big on titling my poems lately. Many my pen can teach your pen how to swim, but you're too busy hating so you can't learn no lessons. You don't get to define me with your faulty ink. You don't get to decide I'm only good for haiku. You don't get to decide what I'm good for at all. The only thing you get to decide is what part of my shade you get to sit in. So have a seat and watch me slay on a stage you swore I'd never step on. You don't get it. I'm not fearful of what you say. I will never let you define me. The best thing you can do is hold my cape and make sure it don't get dirty. You can play Robin while I'm at bat. Man, I slaughter 17 syllables when I sleep. So when I get up and add some verbs and make it a poem, it ain't that hard. You see, this poet can weaponize her words so quickly that you don't even know you've been cut till you get home. Don't complain about my verbiage. If what I say is so useless, why don't you use it less? Drinking my Kool-Aid, but claiming not to like the flavor. You don't seem thirsty no more though. My poetry is not open to debate. This pen and paper be Houdini and make pain disappear. All you need to do is take a seat in my pew, watch my words take flight, penetrating souls and feeding minds. I'm a mailman, I deliver words. I'm a priest, I touch souls, I'm a doctor. My words perform surgery on your right and left cortex. I don't get played, I write the script. I walk around with this disease in my mouth, trying not to infect you. My words can give you purpose, but they also give subpoenas. You've been served. Never step into a poet's den unprotected. Your tongue can't save your ears from the verbalization of punishment that I can inflict. Yes, I can make you smile, but I also make your thoughts bleed. I make stitches necessary while cutting open your closed-mindedness. I've served truth to you as an appetizer, the main course wisdom. You don't get the pick from my menu, but everything I serve, is food for thought. Okay, so let's see how am I doing on time? Hopefully I'm doing good. Do some more haikus for you guys. Okay, I explain what haikus are, so I'm gonna get just get right into it. Haiku. Halle Berry has been cheated on. Beauty don't make dick stay home. Haiku. You should put blacks on money. You hashtag us more than dead presidents. Haiku. We have the right to remain silent, but our black hair needs a lawyer. Haiku. You love all 50 shades of gray, but you can't deal with one shade of black? Haiku. When strange fruit becomes fruit, does a forest become a cemetery? Haiku. Kanye used to walk with Jesus. Now he's walking past strange fruit. Free? Dumb. Haiku. Black babies are the only ones born with their own noose. Hung, still born. Haiku. Chadwick had real black panthers. Your folks spill your tea before you sip it. Four years fighting cancer. Not one word from his camp. Real black panthers. Haiku. Don't Wakanda me. You kill your own people. 
fake ass African pride. Haiku. King, can I call you that? Won't be the first time I spelled dick wrong though. Haiku. <laughs> Y'all laughing makes me laugh. Haiku. <laughs> Okay, let me get back. Okay, sorry. Haiku. Those people you thought you needed did not miss the boat. They chose to walk. Okay, how am I doing time-wise, somebody? For some reason I'm not getting the private messages, so give me a fing some fingers on time-wise because, you know, I could go all night. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Haiku. <laughs> he can't heal you, sis. He doesn't have a magic wand. It's a dick, sis. <laughs> Haiku. What does a poet say to a predator? Hello, silence. I'm home. Haiku. Dear women poets, they won't protect you. Poetry is not a verb. Okay. Let me do a chemism. Chemisms are my sayings. I had to call it something. Don't, don't think too long in the name. Like, oh, it's really not. Nah. Just to call it something. Chemism. Don't let your thighs make heart decisions. I'll repeat that. Chemism. Don't let your thighs make heart decisions. I think that one's pretty clear. Let's see, I gotta do one on Will and Jada, because you know, it was so, Will, Jada, come on, entangled. His name is August, is the name of a month. Come on, it was too easy. Okay, I'll do two on them. Okay, I could. What does a Will look like after he's been jaded? Entangled, but rich. Haiku. <laughs> Don't pity August. He wanted a Smith and got a lesson. Class closed. Okay, now I'm getting the messages on time. Thank you. <laughs> Haiku. I'm trying to decide what to do. Okay, Haiku. Uh, should I get, uh, okay. Th this is a constant poet argument in our heads when we're trying to decide which ones to do, especially when it gets close to that. Okay. Um, just because they're in your nest, that does not mean they wanna see you fly. Haiku. How come super is a man, but we gotta wonder about woman? Haiku. Some men act like God took pubic hair to make grit, to make Eve. No, it was a rib. Let's see. Let's see if I can sneak two in. Let's see. Haiku. Black girls ain't made of watermelon sugar. We're naturally sweet, bitch. Haiku. Stop the black on black brainwashing. Other races do not get colorized. I'm gonna need my people to stop with that black on black crime stuff. I'm gonna need them to stop it. I'm gonna need y'all to stop it. 
Name one school shooting where we said we're gonna to need to discuss white on white crime, uh, high school or high school of crime, uh, you know, shooter and shooter crime. We're the only ones who allow this dialogue and then we repeat it. We are so good at regurgitating crap that they don't even have to serve it anymore. So anyway, before I get to preaching, thank y'all. I think my time is up. Yo, <laughs> Kim B. Miller, <laughs> like, like varsity, varsity, like, 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 yo, like you said so much, <laughs> <laughs> so much, um, remind, so one, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for fantastic feature. Um, Tell folks, uh, your information is in the background for some, yes. for somebody who may not be able to see in the background. Uh -huh. um, uh, what, how can people get in contact with you? All that good stuff. Okay, on all social media, I am I am Kim B. Miller. No spaces, no caps. I am Kim B. Miller. My website is kimbmiller.com. I have about six books um, in the middle of finishing one. And I have merch you know i got t-shirts with my haikus on them and mugs and posters and all that good stuff so if you heard something you love pretty much it's probably on the website <laughs> or will be on the website <laughs> were were and and so much more than haiku yes uh major major key because <laughs> folks be quick to put you in a hole and it's like but nah like there's so much more yes. and so Thank you for rocking with us tonight. Drew, you got anything you want to say, Brohan? No, I think she said it all. <laughs> Shout out to Kim B for blowing up the feature like we knew she would. Thank you. Appreciate it having me. I mean, the night is only halfway over. We still got a couple folk on open mic. We got our final feature, 13 of Nazareth, coming up. So y'all came on a good night. Y'all staying for a good fight. Let's rock. Indeed. And take your dicks out your hands. Take them out your hands. <laughs> Y'all, um, I'm, <laughs> what'd you say? What is, why is a man super and we got to wonder about the woman? Yeah, super Black woman. Time is a hoax, like COVID and global warming. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, nah. oh my gosh. Nah. Yo, <laughs> the, the, uh, the parodies provided are not, uh, no, this is the parody, check this out. Go for right. it. This is what it would look like if Samuel L. Jackson moderated the next presidential debate theme. <clears throat> there was an idea to bring together two candidates, see if they could become something more. It's an old fashioned notion, but at some point, enough is enough. Now we're not going to interrupt each other anymore. Now I've had it with these motherfucking candidates on this motherfucking stage. Interrupt again, interrupt one more motherfucking time. I dare you, I double dare you motherfucker. Interrupt one more goddamn time. See. That's what we need, man. We need Samuel L. Jackson moderating. We need it in Zoom so you could silence and, 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 and mute folks, you know what I'm saying? We need somebody who could take charge. That moderator looked like a substitute teacher who didn't know nobody's name on the first day. Now, now, now please, Mr. President, no, please. Don't. Nah, you gotta run shit or leave. I done left. If motherfuckers is listen, not listening to me like that, I'd be like, clearly y'all don't need me. The point is moderate. <laughs> you be willing to leave. It's like any relationship. The motherfucker who's willing to leave runs the shit. He didn't run nothing. Chris Wallace lost that debate. <laughs> but anyway, that's not. Hey, hey, yo. For one, they needed to have it on Zoom so nobody else can get COVID. <laughs> like, how about that? How about that? Um, but okay. Zoom it. Taking, taking a, taking a, taking a beat. <laughs> Woo. All right. Yo, you know who's next, Drew Tang? I know who's next. Who's I'm next? excited about who's next. Me too, this, 
This next artist is uh, somebody who has been supportive of Spit That for a very, very, very long time, an ongoing feature, um, a feature uh, at one of the earliest of the Spit That's with Willie Mammoth, um, runs a uh, bed and breakfast uh, for artists who want to like, you know, take a retreat, gather themselves. Um, I've, I I go there and I get my hair done and all that good stuff, but none of that even matters. Right now, you're about to bang your hands together and prepare to celebrate the amazing, the fantastic Lunaverse, Luna the Poet. Hey, hello, hello. I'm gonna cut my chatter short because I just got my little battery warning. So <laughs> one, yes, I run a bed and breakfast. It's called Moonlight House, uh, moonlighthousebba.com. Two, go vote, go vote, go vote. And three, here's my poem. So um, writing prompt 513 of this year was a noun I can't pronounce. And so I didn't start writing on it until um, the first and I finished it today. So you get new shit. <sighs> There's a noun I can't pronounce. Tastes like sweetest kiss on salty neck. Sounds something like a saxophone's deepest breath. It's said that its effects are euphoric at best. I heard that once it reverbs in your ears, no other sound will be clearer than that noun no one should name. Lips fumble to frame themselves around a picture-perfect pronunciation. However, alliteration hasn't an ally here. Here, tongues twist on purpose. Licks are lain with utmost precision. Words need not be spoken. There are far better things we can choke on, my dear. Here, we follow the flow. Throw ourselves head first down the rabbit hole. How far are you prepared to go to partake of my tricks and my treats? Of all the delectable delicacies, let me be the treasure you seek. Does it pique your curiosity that in between the sheets of us, this word gained its breath? grew wings and sprouted a sound of its own, inaudible to most, mostly edible to us, like gush of peanut butter passion squished with sticky sweet lust. We melt, when we mingle, we stick and get stuck, we fuck like it's nobody's business, careless, mm -mm, care less, who hears ecstasy erupt. It's just, we can't fight the feeling, it sucks. I can't find the word, so let's just resolve to give in and give this word to the universe. Let it decipher if it's a curse or a blessing. Let it decide whether it, we birth it or it births us. Let's no longer discuss this noun I can't pronounce for the life of me, yet it breathes life in me when I'm with you insightfully blurring the line between you and I declaring all our truths. Perhaps we've used the word too lightly. Maybe it carries the weight of the world. Possibly it's everything and nothing answer to a continual conundrum. It seems to slice through silence and ring loudly when releasing. Can signal giving in completely or jumping in the deep end freely? I prefer mine over easy like Sunday morning sunshine peeking through cracked blinds. When breath and crescendos align, how do you prefer yours, inside or outdoors, mouth opened or lips closed, enveloped or enveloping? Let's see if we can shake down the heavens with it, break the gates of hell when it escapes our lips. Can we test the hands of fate with it, touch each other's spirits when it's whispered lovingly? We know it needs no voice. Even when we lend it ours, sometimes it leaves no choice. Others, it's the best around. In anger or in ecstasy, no matter how long or brief, this noun I can't pronounce can give the greatest grief. Yo, my joint about to cut off. Does anybody know what the word is? 
Yeah, the word is pregnant because I'm pregnant. Listen to that poem. The word is sigh. (laughs) (sighs) 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 Yeah. (laughs) It's beautiful. Well, thank you. I'm sorry I had to rush through the last part, but I got like two more warnings during the joint. So you'll never lose power for real. All right. Well, I guess you could lose power fucking like that. That phone right now. <laughs> Yo, hurry up and charge your phone. <laughs> love y'all. Peace. Love you. Peace. <laughs> y'all, show some love in the chat. All that good stuff quick before uh, before her phone dies. Show your love. Is there an emoji the the poet. your pearls? There's got to be a touch pearl reaction emoji around here somewhere. <laughs> Virgin ears emoji, perhaps? Not I re- like that. I need some milk. <laughs> it sucks. We fuck. We care less. We care less. It was like a rap. Yeah. Bars. It was like the damn. It was snapping. It was like. <laughs> I bet it was snapping. Wet ass poetry. Wop. Wet ass poetry. That's what it was. Mm. Damn, Luna. Luna person um, in the house. I want I want to take a moment. Uh, yes, indeed. Show some love to Luna. I also want to show some love to our Facebook family over on the other side, going wild in the chat. I see Rebecca Bishop Hall and Jadine Slaughter in the house. What's popping, y'all? Um, also saw some other members of the family uh, throughout the chat over on this side. Uh, Emika is in the building. So, yeah, let's definitely, you know, uh, have a good time. It's all about a good time. Um, it's you also about Rebecca Bishop Hall. Oh, I it? did say Rebecca. Hold on, hold on. Highlight, highlight what Drew is showing on the Facebook chat. Did you just say Rebecca Bishop Hall oh, was in the house? Cause I got her book right here. You did. <laughs> What's up, Rebecca? What's up to all our spit that family? And shout out to poets and writers uh, for 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 co-sponsoring what we doing tonight. You dig? Showing us some love. All of our spit that family continue to grind. But yeah, I keep my my tomes, you dig? I taught Rebecca Bishop Paul in high school. I ain't teaching poetry though, I taught her biology. (laughs) Shout out to all of our new, old, classic spit that family. I love being able to pull, be in my living room and pull out the tomes. Okay, back to the open. I think we got one more open mic, Hamdi. Uh, that sound about right, but I'm gonna take a look while you call up this next artist. Okay. I mean, I can't call up the artist while you're taking a look because I need you to take a look to tell me the next artist. Oh, I mean, that's per- I, uh, I, I imagine you would use your perception. But well, is, that the, the, is that the that clue? Is, that's the name. Yeah. That's the name. Okay. <laughs> the way to check in, like a good partner, if we got anybody else on the list, we might not. So, that's, yep, that's it. On deck is our final feature. But coming up right now is Perception. Please give it up, spit that family for the one known as Perception. There we go. Hello, everyone. Um, McGinty Perception. I'm a sophomore at Howard University, and today I'm going to spit for you one of my faves called Four C Love. And it airs on the Afro. So <laughs> here we go. They say my hair is a nuisance. My coils are so tight they form a nuisance fruit. Set flame to the popular trees and burn these roots. See, my curls are not loose, my hair is nappy. How can I be happy if these locks trap me like blackbirds caught in a stare? But black is the color of my true love's hair, so there I stand. Products in my hands are products of my own hands manipulation. Manipulating a broken image the world tells me I must mimic as if black culture isn't already mine. But beauty becomes redefined, I never fit the definition. Never have the volume of the definition, so I scream because I refuse to listen to your terms and conditions. Bump your perm and conditioner. You can't condition me. You can't force me to foresee this. Foresee as a look that isn't for me. See, my hair is my crown. My hair is my glory. My hair is inherited from my daddy's side, so it is a part of his story. History shows that kings, queens, and warriors rock these cornrows. And in the image of Angela Davis, I will wear my afro 
so no no more screaming what was me middle fingers up to anybody who talks about my hair so jokingly when i will love every single nap and beady bead openly despite you telling me my hair is a nuisance when i can get my flat twist so tight they can form your nuisance i will embrace the shea butter and the strained fruit the shea moisture and the can too see i got coconut oil and honey all up in these band tools and if you were this unapologetic you would be a fan too thank you guys so much i appreciate it being here we appreciate you being there too h u you know you know <laughs> man i'm old school howard i don't think he was alive yet when i was at howard but i know one thing we did a lot of poetry when we were at howard and that piece you did right there would have fit right in with all the fire we was spitting back in the late 90s when i was in howard so that means it's timeless it remind me of when I was there, it's relevant to now, and it'll still be good later. So please keep writing, keep spitting, and keep rocking with us at Spit That. And if you're free Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time, IG Live, Spit That DC. Post another one, you dig. Get it under dig. What? Cheer, cheer. Who calling me right now? I should answer the phone while I'm on the show. Just be <laughs> anyway. Hey, Whoa. Drew, cool if I do something real quick? Of course, bro. Do your thing. All right. Um, so, you know, uh, this is a piece called Human Aptitude Test Examples. Um, here we go. One, when reading a sentence, what voice do you use? Does that voice change when the character is revealed to be Black? See also Latina. Latinx, see also Asian, see also any culture often caricatured, see also young, see also gay, see also anything that you may not perceive yourself to be. Two, innocence dripped from the edge of, finish this sentence. What did you see? How did you define innocence? Was there a young girl? Was it a defenseless bunny in the clutches of a wild cat? Was it a boy's hooded sweatshirt? Three, sometimes death is the sweet escape. There is no greater finite, no more defining moment than the way we die. Nothing that leaves fewer words spoken. Life is syntax, an exercise in understanding. Death is the period closing a life sentence. Poem. Yep, poem, all right. That's an understatement. That's my guy right there. I mean, y'all already know he like that. Mm. Who you should know is like that, too. Our feature, our second feature is coming up to rock right now. Now, while I'm pulling out throwbacks, when it ain't even Thursday, I'm going to pull out this right here. This is 13 of Nazareth's first chat book. Wow. Pull out, I was trying to pull out his CD, too, Fallout Shelter. Now, you know I keep everything. It's signed, too. I was trying to dig that one up. While I was trying to dig that up, I found all the cats we used to run with, all the early Fifth L stuff, q -T, um, freaking Frick, man. Who else I saw? I saw a bunch. Of, I saw Crystal Lee CD. I saw all the old Urban Avenue 31 stuff. I just got to organize it, but I got everybody's stuff. But this right here, this dude right here, I don't know if he got this book, but I know what he do got. He got bars, he got rhymes, he got ideas. This is one of the most brilliant poets I've ever known. Um, perfect feature for the spook who spat by the dad since we talk about revolution, because he gonna revolutionize our minds in some whole different ways. He's got ideas about how to change the way we think about money. He's got spiritual inspiration for us. He's got lyrical Bars is gonna make you wish you wrote them. The dude could spit, he could write poetry, he could do it all. And he is also co-founder of Great Publishing, all right? So he and his darling wife, who by the way, is the uh, poet laureate of Alexandria, Virginia, um, they were teaching us how to make our art a business years ago. When I met them like 20 years ago, they were doing stuff like the Poets Ball and the um the national uh spoken word poetry you know newspers the national underground spoken word poetry awards 
starting publishing companies and all the things. And so these are inspirational beings, not just with the art side, but also with the business side. And I think you're gonna get a little bit of both tonight when 13 and Nazareth gives us the deal. Dwayne, you got anything to add? I just wanna say 13 has inspired me since before I was a host before, since before, before you dig. And um, just like chatting with 13 about walking on the rails and like how people interact and the way that we like vibe and, 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 and move together um, as, a, as cultures in this world. Um, that's truly an inspiration. And so uh, thank you 13. I look forward to hearing what you are sharing with us today. Without uh, th thank you. Uh, Word up. Without further ado, spit that family, Willie family. Let's get it together and make it happen. All show our Facebook Live and Zoom. Show our love for our feature, our second feature, 13 of Nazareth. Peace, peace. Uh, thank you uh, for having me. Uh, Speaking of the rails, I was I was walking today. Um, it 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 has throughout the years become, uh, well, the past few years anyway, become uh, one of my favorite pastimes. Um, and in the midst of me being awkward, and oh, also the uh, semi-related for the social media stuff. The Facebook, it, I mean, it's still there, but I no longer have access to it. So if you want to follow me, use the Twitter or Instagram. Um, so I have been trying to figure out what I would share this evening. And so I think I'm, I'm gonna share a, a couple of things that I have not shared uh, before. So I've always been a loner, keeping to myself uh, amidst the collectives to which I have belonged. My tendency toward quiet makes me easy to not notice present in body absent in focus, but still listening, looking, loving my people for the fullness of themselves, for the fullness of their flaws. Is it not written that they are gods and the beginning of my wisdom is being in awe of these deities with amnesia on purpose? Bunch of saviors born who have forgotten their purpose and who am I? but one of them who bumped his head and remembered, wondered if the receipt of knowledge requires being injured near death, like, like the body cannot contain the light of being a Christ unless the darkness is allowed to break it down to nothingness. So the light can be, so, so the God inside can speak to the formless void darkness moving over their faces in deep, thought about random things, possibly ancestral memories of being kings, queens, paupers, whores, animals on display, alligator bait, the subject of four score and seven years, Jim Crow, and the psychological weapons engineered for self-destruction. In a history told from perspectives designed to convince them to view themselves as nothing, worth saving or praying or praying for so they accept being preyed upon because it sounds sacred. I mean, being supper is almost like being the subject of supplication, especially when it's a crime for you to understand the language beyond hearing orders and obeying because once upon a time, reading could lead to our slaying. I, I built a library to live in, tried to become a book of scripture with long wind and layers and open wound bandage with prayers underneath this skin. I look like a mummy trying to get the life. Like my people 
try to get to the money. And I can't knock their hustle, even if some of them knock me over on Black Fridays to give away profits, even as they release murderers from prisons on Good Fridays to give away profits to the slaughter. These contradictions bring me to the stage like it's an altar, like I can take the sins of my people onto myself and transform them while putting on a good show. And my people love a good show. They wanna see what I'm saying so they can see whether or not I'm playing a role or if I'm really about that life of laying my soul bare to waste in this barren wasteland, will I embarrass myself for their embrace? Like they embarrass themselves just to make ends meet and barely make it through the week only to rest on the Sunday and repeat. I hear words have power, but everybody's talking and nobody is listening. Guess that's the real problem. So many soap boxes, we become a soap opera of dirty laundry that nobody is washing. Just sitting on the couch with a remote control watching, flipping channels, changing, nothing. I had a whole lot to say. I decided against it. Thought it was a man's world till I studied the women. I wanted a life of fame, but I visited prison and found both to be the same, celebrated different. Names, just numbers, rap song, rap sheet, either way behind bars, just one got beat, the other got beef. Shanks to the abdomen award winning speech. Thanks to the audience, respect on the street is a credibility gauge. If the hood don't agree, fuck with whoever say. If the hood don't love them, them niggas can get the grave. If the hood's disrespected, retaliate right away. These attitudes put my people in a cage. Same attitudes put my people on a stage. Funny thing is, all of them got chains. Some iron, some gold, some prison, some fame. I guess the value of the metal is the value of the man in the eyes of society. I wonder what's the plan. I, I wonder if the ignorance that sends us to the slammer is the same type of ignorance that turns us into fans. Like being on television makes you more than a man. Like, like being sent to prison makes you much less than. See, the average person is a victim of propaganda. Even the term average person is propaganda in this campaign over slaves and masters. See, the paradigms don't shift if the people don't assist and the people don't assist if the people don't know what a paradigm is or how this system of practice affects them on a day-to-day -day basis. Your, your textbooks mean nothing if you're struggling for basic. Food, clothing, shelter, dependable transportation, traveling all in a circle to all the same places. Social lines drawn keep people in their places. In this Kentucky Derby, you're a horse. Keep racing. Did you borrow your ass from a horse? Keep shaking. I apologize. I, I think you're amazing. But if I don't objectify you, the radio won't play it. And if radio don't play it, the people who need it most will never hear what I'm saying. Your sacrifice is duly noted. You're a goddess, and I know it from the blasphemy and veneration of every lyric spoken. See, this whole industry is devoted to the woman's body. We, we bless it, then we curse it. We love it, then we hurt it. We speak of all its value, then we treat it like it's worthless. Yet regardless of position, women figure ways to work it, to empower all themselves, making heaven out of hell. She only naked due to faith in men saying sex sells. So she spread sheet vagina, Microsoft XL, make it clap like a round of applause. Hell yeah. And if you wonder why I'm coming with thunder around here, I brought peace. You told me to be a saint elsewhere. I hear words have power, but everybody's talking and nobody is listening. Guess that's the real problem. So many soap boxes, we become a soap opera of dirty laundry that nobody is washing. Just sitting on the couch with a remote control, watching, flipping channels, changing, nothing. Just sitting on the couch with a remote control, watching, Flipping channels, 
changing nothing. Um, ignore that phone ringing in the background. But I, I actually, I'm gonna let it be like background music while while I talk for a second about nothing in particular because this was not planned as a part of what's happening. Uh, so I, I was sharing uh, based on what uh, Dwayne had mentioned uh, about my walking on the rail, right? This is something that I have been doing uh, for several years now uh, as a part of my exercise routine, uh, just the focus on being healthy. You know, for uh, those of you who do not know, uh, I have been suffering with seizures uh, for over 20 years. And uh, the exercise routine has been about not suffering with seizures anymore. And it's helpful uh, in multiple ways, right? It, it's, it's been helpful in terms of just strengthening the body, but it's also been helpful in terms of, of, of easing my mind uh, with, with in regard to the stresses that come uh, from the health issues and from living in general. Uh, but all of that to say, uh, one of the, the first lesson that I learned from walking on the rails, right? I don't know if you've ever done this, you know, did this as a child, uh, but the, the first lesson that I learned, right? The, the, the rail is narrow, right? And straight. Right, even in the places where it curves. And so the lesson that came from this is that just because a path is straight and narrow does not mean that it is level and smooth. So as you journey through your life into whatever you are going into, right? And you choose a particular road Right, there will be times when that road will, it will be a straight and narrow path, uh, whether you are religious or not. Uh, but when you encounter that, do not assume that while you are on that path, that the straightness and narrowness of it will actually amount to it being smooth. There will be bumps, there will be, you know, dense, there will be places where uh, it leans one way or another, where it's rounded on the top instead of flat. Uh, yeah, but uh, if that is useful, use it. Uh, if not, ignore and listen to my next poem. Uh, until you have conscientiously humiliated yourself for a love that cannot see far beyond the cloud of its own suffering, far enough to even acknowledge your offering, I'm not sure you are qualified to bear witness to what follows. Until you have intentionally stood between a love and the bad karma it has created for itself while watching that love use the spare time you gave to create a karmic something else much worse than what you shielded them from at first, I'm not sure you are even qualified to bear witness to what follows. Until you have looked a love in the eyes with love in your eyes only to realize that the love you love is in the process of going blind and deaf and numb and doing things so dumb and damn far outside themselves, the only thing you can think makes sense is that this love somehow, is that this love somehow thinks it is something less. I am not sure you are even qualified to bear witness to what follows. And what follows is a pain. 
that words can point toward without being able to explain no matter how vast the vocabulary may be. And maybe this is a responsibility I was not supposed to shoulder, but alas, I'm Atlas on bended knee with bent spine trying to bend my mind around this bullshit. Guess it's supposed to fertilize my gifts in this perfect world. The truth be harder to handle when I'm attached to the people that the truth is being told about. But I'll wrestle with angels just to hold them down, just to lift them up into the light when the dark got their hearts and their minds. But I have realized that I am clearly not Christed. Or else this poem, this would be a poem about how I let love break my spine to prove my conviction. And this poem would be written by someone who bore witness to my subsequent death, resurrection, and ascension. Um, so a confession before I get into this last piece, uh, I have never read the spook who sat by the door. Um, so, uh, I think I need to add that to, to my repertoire of things, but, you know, thankful to the internet, you know, I was able to look up and get a synopsis of the novel and subsequent film. Uh, but in that synopsis, I think that this piece uh, that I am with which I am going to close is actually fairly well connected. Uh, thank you uh, again, you know, for having me before I close out. And, you know, hopefully I see y'all on social media somewhere uh, with the relative amount of time that I spend there. Okay. Everywhere the watchers be watching every keystroke. Claiming the analytics be necessary to provide better service. The benefits have been weighed, but is the cost really worth it? When the data you give away is immediately purchased by private corporations and public agencies, is it really paranoia or just a proven thing about the power structure and corruption that it breeds automatically a tragedy is brewing in our midst. It was spoken of for centuries, nobody gave a shit because the tech to pull it off simply did not exist. And now that it does integrate it deeply in our life, the convenience got us hoping that powers will treat us right. Although history repeatedly tells us different of the outcome. We really like posting pictures to show strangers what we have done and where we have been. Maybe we're addicted to the fame. Artificial as it may be, guess it helps to ease the pain temporarily, verily though we walk through the shadow of death, of debt. How the fuck we get paid and be dead broke next minute? I guess we living in the future for as money concerned and central banks literally got money to burn. Every penny we earn, beg, borrow, or steal already owed to somebody for something and still. If we gave it all back, the nation would remain in the negative with creditors impossible to change without system collapse. On some beef of vendetta better get you a mask, better get you an ax. Better chop you some wood, learn how to build a fire, grow your family some food, but that requires some land and some water that's clean while the dye from our genes being pumped in the streams. And we act like Fukushima is an isolated thing as if water stays still, how much ocean could we freeze? And still live, of course that question's hypothetical, can't freeze part of the ocean when the polar caps melting and the ozone thinning and the seasons are shifting, tornado alley moving to the east. The insects and animals can see what's happening, but we call them invasive, use traps and pesticides, keep environments in line with oblivious acts of planetary level genocide for a dollar. Human beings spend their life because we'd rather be paid than alive. I say we'd rather be paid than alive, but who you gonna buy from when everybody dies over the bullshit and some lies? I keep pointing at the same signs. 
but the advertisements tell you to drive straight into oblivion like everything is fine. Everywhere the watchers be watching every keystroke, claiming the analytics be necessary to provide better service. The benefits have been weighed, but is the cost really worth it when the data you give away is immediately purchased by private corporations and public agencies? Is it really paranoia or just a proven thing? about the power structure and corruption that it breeds automatically. A tragedy is brewing in our midst. It was spoken of for centuries. Nobody gave a shit because the tech to pull it off simply did not exist. And now that it does, integrate it deeply in our life. The convenience got us hoping that powers will treat us right. Whenever the powers ever treated people right. Whenever the powers ever treated people right. If you don't want to take my word, that's fine. Study the history of empires. Let what you learn decide. Thirteen and hey. with y'all. I was typing, but now I guess I could say it. That quote that you had: "Whenever the powers ever treated people right." That ties right into something I just read in um, Robert Greene's book, "The Laws of Human Nature." It's a chapter called Make Them Want to Follow You. It's about being a good leader. And he talked about the ambivalence we feel toward leaders. And he talked about Queen Elizabeth the first. And yeah, so I see a comment Dwayne put about how we should start a book club, word to that. Um, and I mean, the dude brought it as we knew he would, 13 in Nazareth, there's only one of them, yet he calls himself 13. <laughs> thank, thank you. No doubt. And you know, I hope that we were just inspired and educated and enlightened in all of the things. Um, I know I was. You see the social media up here. You also see the link in the chat for the card. Please sign this card. Let's spit that tradition. Um, we show our love. And also, if you go back in the chat, there's a Google Doc link for Kim's uh, I, Kim B card. I signed both. You know, uh, make sure y'all sign both. Show that love. Um, can I? Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Drew. Well, I just want to say 13, yes, brother, sir. thank you. Thank you. The line that's going to resonate with me uh, all night, human beings spend their life because they'd rather be paid than alive. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. That's it. I mean, that's yeah. that's the thing. I, 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 we, I think it's important, you know, and I, it has become more clear to me the importance of having you know, a healthy understanding of money's place and function, uh, both in your life and in the world around you that you might not have your hands on directly, but to let that be, to let the money be your leader, I think is to misunderstand it. Mm. Real spill, real spill. Thank you, thank you. Word to 13. Uh, when you I'm gonna pass doing, it over uh, to Drew. When you was doing your poetry, I was thinking, man, have you ever lost a notebook? Because somebody, if, if they found it and just <laughs> got all them jewels or maybe decided to claim them for their own, no, I, it might change their life. Man, I, <laughs> you know, I, I did lose, I, I used to have an iPod and I would, I would write poems in it. And I lost it. Mm. Uh, and I think I I had it wiped uh, remotely. So you know, if somebody found it and they connected to Wi-Fi, then you know that stuff is gone. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was, there were a lot of poems, mm -hmm. uh, several that I had shared like once, but not, not dedicated to memory. Mm. So I was actually frustrated for a while uh, about that loss. Well, I appreciate me for triggering the memory of it. Uh, oh, no, no, it's, I'm, I'm good now. I mean, it's that's that thing is that is what it is. It, you know, if somebody found it and they got the poetry and it has actually benefited their life, 
you know, like if, if I wrote something from which they could learn, then, you know, bless them. Yeah. It, you know, if you like it, cool. If you don't like it, cool. Because I wrote, I wrote this to feel good. I didn't write this for you. I wrote this to feel good and I do. And that's Amen. a Nazareth bar from almost 20 years ago. Feel good poetry from the album Fallout Shelter. Feel like Don Cornelius. I need one of them long skinny microphones. <laughs> but yeah, I'm about to kick this piece for y'all to close out the show you dig. I think it's relevant to things that are going on right now. So I'm going to kick it. The first stage of grief is denial. So when COVID-19 first appears, our leadership called it China's problem. You know, as if pathogens were as nationalist as they asses is. And speaking of our leadership, we denied that they were ours. As if I, not my president, hashtags would be enough to vaccinate us from a nonpartisan nano menace which doesn't distinguish between left or right, wing or lung. As if voting no confidence in Captain Clueless would be enough to make us any less than passengers aboard his soon to be crashing Titanic, heading straight toward the ice, ice baby. We don't stop, collaborate, or listen. When the CDC tells us, wash your hands, protect yourself, put on your mask, show me social distancing. We look at them like they said something mystical. And when they ask us what we're doing, we say, ooh, nothing. Now see, the second stage of grief is anger. So when COVID-19 makes his stateside debut, I feel his leader trumped his previous rhetoric from calling it China's issue to straight up Kung Flu. Meanwhile, the same president who, when pressured to prioritize people over paper, countered that the solution shouldn't be worse than the problem, readily recommended untested and questionable quasi-COVID-19 medicines with potentially deadly side effects. But I guess that would be one way to get past one's infection, one's death. Now see, the third stage of grief is bargaining. So let's make a deal. If I tell you that two of the most COVID-19 ravaged wards in DC are located in Southeast with but one hospital to share in between, perhaps you can tell me what kind of peeps tend to inhabit them streets. I'll give you a hint, always bet on black. You know why six was afraid of seven? Cause seven, eight, nine, but COVID-19 is eating wards seven and eight alive, which brings me to the fourth stage of grief, depression. Too exhausted, too exasperated to believe that this is a war we can win, I'll assume we've already lost. I'll assume that COVID-19 has already infected every person I come across. And assuming I wrote these words on a, memor a Memorial Day weekend that saw record crowds at Ocean City right after seeing record peaks of infection in the state of MD, assume that the next Memorial Day will be for we. And assuming they come up with anything like a vaccine, excuse me if I decline. You see, Drew done got to where he do not do flu shot because he be too Tuskegee to trust easy. And it's not that I'm anti-vax. I just know what Henrietta lacks. And I know hella well that this is a country that will take your black magic, bottle it up and sell it back to you as a cure that your black ass is too poor to afford. Which brings me to the fifth and final stage of grief. Acceptance. Accept the fact that we'll never go back to normal and accept the fact that that's not necessarily something to fear, accepting the idea that our normal is necessarily what got us here. And maybe, just maybe, COVID can't be cured because maybe, just maybe, COVID is the cure. COVID, capitalism only values infinite dollars. COVID, cure our violently intolerant demeanor. COVID, change our viciously inequitable district. COVID, courageously our voices inspire defiance. COVID, changing ourselves, victory is destined. COVID, come out, virus is dead. Thank y'all for coming out tonight on FB and Zoom. We gonna take it over here to the, to the super slides. As we go on out, don't forget to show support and love to our Features, Kim B. Miller, you see all of the social media, it's easy to see. I am Kim B. Miller with no spaces, no caps, no cap, cause she ain't lying. Boom, our second feature of the evening, you might recall 113 of Nazareth, and you see just where to get to him. Skip over the Facebook one, he doesn't have access to it anymore. Holler at him on IG, holler at him on Twitter. All right, these artists have products, they got books, Kim B. Miller got t-shirts, and just engage, let's build, let's talk. 
So next time you see Kim B. Miller and 13 and Nazareth, you know the words to the pieces because you got the books, you've listened to the albums, you've engaged with them in, as people, and it's a different type of, of engagement next time you see them rock. You could be fans and friends, how about that? Our next Spit That Willie Mammoth, Spit That Residency, first Mondays is November the 2nd. It's called Spit Grat, also known as Spit Gratitude. Is really November the second? That's a that's that's a Monday for sure. Okay. Yeah, well. it, it's just before uh just before Tuesday of that uh, election situation. How about that, there? Okay. So yeah, we we gonna be grateful for uh <laughs> <laughs> for for being before the election and not after, cause well, that's gonna feel. We gonna see how we feel after that. Well, in any um, case, I vote for you, D Town. So I'm winning anyway. That's funny because I vote for you, Drew Tang. Mm -hmm. um, the you know what's real? Uh, our next features are gonna be uh, Soul Like Soul and uh, Piero, aka Keep It PG. So Keep yeah, PG as come in through next. Prince George's County, and as in Peruvian gangster, when you see him, when you meet him, he'll tell you why. But in the meantime, lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, lions and tigers and the what did we say? <laughs> Lions was, and tigers and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Peace, y'all. Thank y'all for rocking with us.